This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. My name is Alex, and the name of the program in yellow there is The Ramble, and we're here until midnight tonight from the east coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry Bubbles Brown. Okay. Hi, Larry. Hey. What's happening, Larry? <laughs> Let's just do, do the whole thing like this. Just, you know, what, what's new, Larry? Larry, can you hear me? Yeah. What's new? Can you hear now me? I, huh? You can't. Okay. He, you can't hear me. I can now. I can. Okay. Well, I was I was talking low. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, how you doing? Good. Good. Yeah. Uh, 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 you been doing any gigs lately? Uh, I did a very nice winery last uh, Saturday in uh, Livermore, which is full of wineries for some reason, and those. Uh, very nice uh, places to do uh, comedy shows for some reason. Yeah, do you like uh, wine particularly? It seems to draw a nice crowd. I don't know. They seem to be a little, uh, they're a little older, a little smarter. I don't know. It's a little drunker? A little drunker, yeah. Well, oh, they're definitely. Be- <laughs> well, the, the clubs, that's, you, co- comics, our job is to, uh, our job is to make drunks laugh, isn't it? We're just selling drinks. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, you are you 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 are supposed to sell drinks. That's the only reason they don't care about you. For any, you have no other use in society but to sell drinks. Yeah, that's what it is. You break it down. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, when you're not selling drinks, you're doing a sitcom. So, you know. Yeah. Mm. So, yes, uh, entertaining drunks is a <laughs> Maybe it wasn't a great career choice. I don't know. Uh, you have to deal with those drunks occasionally. Are, are hecklers drunks, or are they just hecklers? Uh, there's, uh, yeah, you get the kinds that heckle, but sometimes they just get loud and they're talking with their friends, which is kind of worse, you know. It's just, See, people it's noisy and out of control. And yeah, well, and the club does nothing about it. They usually don't know, and the uh, the worst thing you can possibly get is a bachelorette party, a drunk a table of drunken women that come in. That's uh, just they got these high pitched voices shrieking, and they're just out of control. And that bad? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Wow, wow. So yeah. alcohol is a horrible drug. Oh, I think it's the worst. I, you know, I for years have been saying that I never saw anything wrong with prohibition. You know, um, Mm -hmm. because what happened was the reason prohibition, well, you know, prohibition was an outgrowth of of, uh, women getting the right to vote and women's suffrage. It was kind of a trade off, you know, because the women's suffrage movement came out of a, a desire to stop alcohol. Because women would get beaten up like crazy by their husbands. They'd go out, they'd get drunk, they'd come home, they'd beat the crap out of them. So the big bane of a woman's existence was their husband going out and getting drunk, getting drunk and losing all the money they had. You know, I know it sounds depressing, folks, but in those days there was an average of, I think, four establishments on every street that sold alcohol. Beer, in particular, and uh, so it was. There was there was too much of it, you know. And yeah, and it's, uh, it, people get so violent yeah. on alcohol. Yeah, and so uh, uh, you know, uh, prohibition comes along, and alcohol is made illegal, and under most circumstances, and um, this goes on for about. I think prohibition was maybe 10 years, if I'm not mistaken, maybe a little more, a little less. And um, 
By the time alcohol came back in, the drinking level didn't go up to what it was prior to prohibition. So the outgrowth of prohibition that was positive was there was less drinking. Well, I never knew that. That's good. That's a, you know. Yeah, I mean, you would have thought the minute that alcohol became legal again, <laughs> yeah. it would go right back to where it was and maybe even get worse. But it didn't. Uh, it, it, it kind of leveled off, and it became easier to control and so on and so forth. But prior to uh, Prohibition, alcohol was the ruin of this country. I mean, it was... Yeah, I, I've seen pictures from that era, just like people d- drunk and lying face down in the street. <laughs> no, it was horrible. It was just horrible. Uh, and uh, so I never, I never was against al- uh, against prohibition as a stopgap measure to slow things down. Would be a good way of putting it. Yeah. You know, and it did slow things down. But I mean, I mean, I, alcohol is probably the worst drug we have. It's worse than heroin. It's worse than anything. And people yeah. say, oh, worse than heroin? Yeah, heroin's highly overrated as a bad drug. Not that it's a great drug. It's just highly overrated. Alcohol is a much worse drug. Yeah, you don't, uh, people in heroin aren't killing people driving. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't, you don't die from alcohol. Yes, you do. You know, alcoholism has killed people. Cirrhosis of the liver has killed people. It's just slower when, when heroin decides to kill you, it decides to kill you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's been, there's been some great movies about alcoholism. Uh, the Lost Weekend. Yeah, it's a guy who sells his typewriter for alcohol. <laughs> Which and, I, let's uh, see, how, the, many, uh, how, many, how many bottles of alcohol can I get for this typewriter? <laughs> when that name is... Who was it? It was Ray Milland. That Ray Milland. God, you're you're so. Good. And that was before you were born. Yes, but I remember seeing the movie when I was young, so I, it kind of a, it kind of scared me. He was having those, uh, what the delirium tremors and. Oh yeah. You get from alcohol, and it, it made me thought. And I don't drink, but that it reinforced me. Well, I'm never going to have a drink. Well, the worst movie ever made to prevent people. From quitting heroin was Man with the Golden Arm. Picture with Frank Sinatra. That I never saw. In which he played a guy who was a heroin addict, and he then tries to quit. And his girlfriend, who I think was, who played his girlfriend? I'm, th- I'm thinking Kim Novak, but I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, he goes through these these horrible convulsions and tremors and sees, you know, and the thing is that, yes, getting off of heroin is not a pleasant thing, but it's not that bad either, you know, (laughs) and so a lot of people who would think about, oh, hey, I think I'm going to quit heroin, go to see this movie and go, no way I'm quitting heroin, I'm not going through that, (laughs) and it, 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 you know, it, 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 it had a death blow to you know, people who were uh, were trying to quit uh, quit heroin. So, whatever. So, anyway, how's your health? How's your hernia? This is what we talk about as we get older, folks. Yeah. How's your and, hernia? And, uh, interesting you should ask. I just made a call. Can you get me in soon, please? Because <laughs> it's not getting any better. So. Really? They, they yeah, actually... sore and sore. So. Well, they did this, uh, you know, this whole body thing with me, the CT scan, the head, the... the, the Torso, the bottom, and they they saw my hernia, and it said really, it basically said it wasn't a problem, it said it isn't impacted at all, you know. So I have a, I have a I have a good hernia, so I don't worry about it anymore. Yeah, you can uh, if it's that small, you just let it go. So. I think as it was growing, it was kind of bothering me, but not. See, folks, this is what people talk about when they get older. How's your hernia? Well, my hernia is fine. It's better, <laughs> a little better than it was. So, so you're gonna go uh, have it taken care of? Uh, they're trying to get me in there. I don't know when it's gonna. It's Kaiser, so it'll probably be. I'll be dead by the time I get in there. So. Yeah, well, you, yeah. Um, Which will solve all. 
see the configure anything about death, it solves all your problems. Well, it, you certainly don't have to worry about that any longer. No. Here, here's the thing. You, you have a j joke in your act, uh, which you, you may as well. You, put, you know the one I'm referring to here about uh, knowing when you were going to die. Yeah, it would be great if you knew what day you were going to die, but not the year. Exactly. But here's the thing that I always think, like, I've got this money, and I've got it kind of, i got a, a bit of money in the bank, more than most people, actually, um, but not as much as I would like to have. So it's sitting there, right? And I'm going, I don't dip into it much. I'm being very careful, so I have it squirreled away from my old age. The only problem is I am old, okay? And how much longer am I going to live? And if I die and leave all that money behind, well, maybe Marjorie gets it, but let's say she goes before me, then nobody gets it, and I should have been spending it. If I knew exactly how long I had to live. Yeah, I, that'd be nice to know so I, you could, like, leave a nickel. Exactly. And max out the credit cards, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, max them out and then say, hey, suckers, it's yours to deal with, you know. <laughs> I had a good time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I went to Europe and I had uh, I had quiche. You know, whatever. <laughs> so it, it would just be nice to, it, it, but not know what year. God, that would be that would be terrible. Every year, like July seventh would come, and you'd be waiting all day to see if you made it through the day. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> now. Um, hmm. Hmm. Would it be better to know when you were going to die? No, that wouldn't be good either. Yeah. So. Yeah, you'd have to prepare for that. So. Yeah. But, but uh, you know, we've lost a lot of people lately. A lot of comedians. I think in the last year, let's see, we lost uh, Gilbert Gottfried, Bob Saget, Norm Macdonald. Yep. Yep. Gilbert, I felt yeah. real bad about. Gilbert Love was a big Gilbert, and we lost, uh, not known as being a comedian, but Kevin Rooney. Oh, Kevin Rooney died? Yeah. Oh, boy. That's in the last month, yeah. Really? I didn't know yeah. that. He, uh, Kevin Rooney, in case people don't know, is one of the funniest comedians I've ever known. I mean, he was, uh, but he did, he basically made his big bucks writing TV shows. He got into writing TV shows, got a... Back in the '90s, when the when TV was throwing money at people, he got a huge development deal, and uh, I think he had a house in uh, L.A. and France. Wow! And how old was he when he died? Seventy-one. God, what did he die of? Uh, he had complications from uh, he had diabetes, and uh, I think he may have had a stroke along the way. Wow. Sugar, we were talking about alcohol not being yeah. good for you. Try sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Try sugar. Sugar sugar is unbelievably. You know, I have not, I, to my knowledge, except for a couple of weeks ago I had some because somebody had a very nice dessert they made and I was at their house and I didn't want to turn down their dessert, so I had, I had sh sugar. But I don't think I've taken sugar into my system. For 20 years you know because there's so many good sugar free substitutes now that, it, that you can go your whole life and not have to have sugar and uh, so I I don't I don't do sugar at all do you do sugar uh, no it's incredibly destructive to your system well I mean it causes uh, you know it does cause diabetes also, and also very, very extremely addictive uh, yes that's the other reason I don't do it is I quit it because I wanted to lose weight initially. Then it was okay because I didn't get as many cavities. Okay, I went to my dentist and my teeth weren't rotting. You know, I love. If you ever go to England, you see the British love their jelly candies. You know the jelly. <laughs> why they have bad teeth? And that's why they've got such bad teeth. Yeah, yeah. But so I mean, uh, I. I just found that by not doing sugar, I really, uh, you know, but if I did some sugar, boy, man, I got a sugar rush. Just incredible. 
And you don't want that. You really no. don't want that. You know, things taste just as good using some of the sugar substitutes. Marjorie, when I first when we first got married, she made me a, you know some kind of sweet thing. You know, I go, why don't you use Splenda in that? Why don't you now stevia in that? And she went, you can't cook with that. I said, yeah, there's a powdered version of Splenda that you can use just like sugar. If you use a cup of sugar, you can use a cup of the Splenda. So she t tried it, and she said, gee, this doesn't taste any different than it would have if I'd used sugar. So now she uses that to do sweet stuff. Um, yeah, unlike the early ones that were so horrible at the, uh, God, that was that diet drink tab was the oh my God. worst crap I ever drank in my life. We knew somebody who was addicted to tab, you remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. Bob Goldthwait. He would come to your show with a six pack and drink. And he stuff. would do it. He would just it's tab, 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 tab. Yeah, right. Okay, fine. He tried to quit tab, and he said it was like a buzzsaw going through his brain. He said it was horrible <laughs> to quit tab. He finally did it, but, you know, I mean, it was horrible. And he thought he was doing a good thing by doing tab and not Coke. But now, yeah. now they have, like, you know, Coke Zero, which tastes just like the real thing. I like that, yeah. Yeah, it's terrific. I, I uh, love it, you know. And uh, I'm buying sugar-free seltzer, you know, flavored seltzer, which I love. I have it right here. Uh, this is my strawberry lemonade flavor, you know. So uh, it's good. But sugar is not good for you at all. That, you know, uh, if, if I had a kid, I would make sure he never got sugar. And parents will always shut up their kids by giving them sugar. They think they're shutting them up. They actually go <laughs> crazy on it. But um, but kids also, as a kid, you're really attracted to sugar. I don't know why. Uh, but kids always, you know, they always want It gives you that energy that lasts for a little while, and then you crash. And well, parents uh, have learned not to give their kids sugar because what happens is you, you know, they, they, they turn into little monsters. But it's funny how things that are bad for you seem to be so addictive. Now, let me ask you this. Like, you've never been married, right? Nope. And never had any kids? Not that I know of. Not, that's, what we, that's what we always say, not that I know of. You know. Um, uh, I've had one kid that I do know of, but I don't know where he is or who he is. Maybe he's, I think he's Howard Stern. Is who I think he is, actually. But um, uh, uh, but you never had any kids. Do you feel any regret not having any kids? Not at all. No. Not at all. No. Because I've started having regrets. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's I want somebody to take care of me in my old age. I don't know. But I just uh, you know I I went. You know, maybe I made a mistake there by not having kids. Like Marjorie, he never had any kids either. So we're we're two people who never had kids. So we we're two of the most selfish human beings you've ever met in your <laughs> life. You know, um, but uh, uh, we never had any kids either. And and I, I'm just, lately I've just been going, gee, do I have a regret in life? And I go, well, you know, what would it have been like to have a kid? You know. But then again, I then say, it being selfish about it, I probably never would have had the career I had had I had kids. Because what do you think about all of a sudden? How am I going to take care of these kids? How am I going to feed these kids? You know, hold your back, yeah. Yeah. Am I going to take, you know, where I would leave a station and say, screw you, bye, you know, and I go find myself another job somewhere in another city on the uh, other half of the country, right? Right. Well, I couldn't make those decisions if I had a kid and a wife or a family. I'd think about them first before yeah, I made a rash. Yeah, that's the reason I didn't get into I didn't. I, the, I, the, that's such a responsibility. I didn't want it. So. Well, you probably never would have gone into comedy no. if you had a wife and kids. You know? Yeah, that would be impossible 
pursue if you're married with a kid. But then I got to a point in my life where, hey, I could have kids and I had a career, you know, and I should have then had kids. Do you remember I went through a period of time on the radio show in San Francisco where I was looking for somebody to have a kid by me? Yes. You do remember that? I do. Didn't have any luck, did we? <laughs> Like, uh, yeah, I like you, Alex, but I don't want to have any kids by you, you know. No, but I, I, I went through that period on the air, didn't I say it, that I was looking for somebody to have a kid with? You did. And that I felt, you know, I really felt, and I still believe, that you could have a kid with somebody that's just a good friend of yours, you know? You don't good. have to be in love and have all that stuff going. In fact, that's probably terrible because that stuff dies. But if you're really good friends, you could probably be friends forever. Might be better. Might be better. And and you both solved a problem that, you know, vexed both of you. And that is, I want kids, you know. And uh, that would have been, I, I just saw that as a possibility, you know. Yeah. So or somebody would have a kid by me and then they would go away and leave the kid with me, you know. <laughs> Because at that point in my life, I could afford to, you know, to take care of a kid, you know, and still do my job, you know, and things like that. Uh, you know, and then you meet a lot of women in the grocery store, too, that way. Yeah. What a cute kid. Yeah, it's mine. Yeah. Use your well, I just saw to raise a kid to age 18 today uh, costs about $300,000. Really? Really? Yeah. I wonder how much it cost when my parents had me. I think it was a buck thirty. <laughs> we were cheap. <laughs> well, you know, kids didn't cost that much. You know, what did you have to do? You had to buy them clothes, and it's one more mouth to feed. But you've already got clothes two. Clothes and food, and uh, I don't know if I, then after they're eighteen, you're going to spend a ton of money if you're going to send them to college. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, my parents never had that problem with me. I, I. I went to college for a short time. I went to, uh, I, w I was already in radio. I was doing radio. And I went to uh, San Francisco City College because they had a radio station there. And uh, after about a year of being taught broadcasting in school, I said, this sucks. I'm getting out of this. Because they're not teaching you anything that's practical. Like here we were, this was in the 19, late 1950s, okay? And they were teaching people how to do radio dramas. You know, which nobody did those anymore. Right. What you had to teach them to be was like a disc jockey or a talk show host or whatever. And they weren't doing any of that. So finally I just said, ah, you know, this college thing is ridiculous. We don't get along. Plus, I've already got a job. Nobody's going to tell me, well, you need to have college to get a job. So I quit and never went back to college and uh, considered my education complete when I just paid attention to everything around me. Yeah. Did you go to college? Uh, a couple of years, yeah, a waste of time. <laughs> oh, okay, same thing, right? Why did you quit? Yeah. Why did you quit? Uh, yeah, same reason you did. I was not getting anything out of it. So. There was no, there was no comedy college. There was no comedy. No. <laughs> you know what about comedy? That is amazing. I think it's still one of the only professions that you, you can't learn. You just do it, and that's your schooling. Am I right? I think you just have to do it, yeah. I mean, could you, if somebody said, Larry, you're very funny, why don't you come to this college and do a course on how to do comedy? You couldn't come up with a formula for those kids, could you? No, I don't think so. The only the way I got into comedy was I went to the open mics and just watched comics for about a year. Yeah, right. And, and watched what they did. Yeah. Did you steal any material in the beginning? I did not steal material, no, but... Uh, but what, what did you listen for? How a joke was constructed? Yeah, and what, uh, what, what they were all doing. It was... Uh, and I had some good people to watch. I had like, Bobby Slate and Jeremy Kramer and Dana Carvey, and uh, I saw some very funny people here. So. 
Yeah. And they were all different, so. They were all different. Yeah. Did you have one in particular that influenced you? I I didn't do anything like him, but yeah, I would say Jeremy Kramer was my... Uh, was your idol. Yeah. But people don't even know who we're talking about. No, but uh, I would say the most unique guy that came out of here from at least our generation, don't you think? Yeah, but I think, and I'll finish on this, one of the reasons I say that you don't want to be called a comedy genius because it hampers you. It, it yeah, exactly. hobbles you. And everybody, oh, Jeremy Kramer, what a... So he just felt because he was a comedy genius, which is, just should all come to him. And yet there were other comics like Will Durst who knew that they weren't inherently funny and that if they were going to be funny and be good comics, they'd have to really work at it, you know? And and those are the, you know, so... That, but if you ever get a chance... Well, where are they going to hear Jeremy Kramer? I don't, even, I don't even know if he's on YouTube. Anyway, hey, that's it. We've run out of time, my friend. We have. Next week, huh? You got it. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. And thank you very much once again to Larry Bubbles Brown. Uh, a lot of people were listening to Larry today. Yeah, good. Good for you. You're listening to a funny, interesting, intelligent guy. And that I like. Okay? Uh, we only have one person waiting. God, this is getting, this is getting pathetic. Just absolutely pathetic. But uh, I will put him on here uh, so that he is... Uh, he is, is is with us. Um, let me see here. There we go. Okay, let me see here. Here we are. There's uh, Josh Wheeler, ladies and gentlemen. And, oh, uh, let me see here. Uh, Alan's uh, jumping in here. Okay, we got Alan. Uh, hello, Alan. How are you this evening? I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hello, Josh. Hello, Alex. Yes, Josh, hello. Will, J Josh will be doing the show after us. Right. Again tonight. I planned on that. Yeah, which is kind of, you'll have to call Zoom as opposed to how you normally call uh, to I normally uh, click check. the link on gabnet.net. Yeah, that's, it's very simple. It's very simple. Oh, here comes Charlene. She joins us for two nights in a row. Uh, and now all we need is Phil Meyer. All we need is Phil Meyer. Yeah. Who was writing me today? I mean, he was almost worse than Tony. Um, you know, I do know. He was sending me stuff about, oh, you know, there were those, there were a whole, there were a whole bunch of folders that didn't have anything in them, right? And he keeps sending me, see, they didn't have anything in those folders, see? Right. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> Phil, I got news for you. There's a suspicion there was stuff in those folders, and they were taken out of those folders by. Do, your boy Donald, the Donald, and uh, maybe sequestered somewhere else, or not even on this on the property. By the time they got there, yeah. So uh, it, it, just the fact that the folders were empty, but they said confidential on them. Why would right. they be empty unless somebody removed the stuff that was in there? So anyway, I just thought I would bring that up. I you know. Hello there. Boy, we have two darkened people tonight. Kevin and, and, and Jeff. Oh, there we go. Uh, 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 yeah, Jeff. Turn on the... Oh, God. Oh, okay. there we go. Okay. Now well, that makes us... Wakes us right up, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, anyway. So, I, I, uh, so, I'm getting these things from Phil all day. You know, oh, the, the, where are the folders? There's nothing in the folders. See? See, nothing in the folders. You know what I don't get, though? You know this judge that they've been going to that's been saying, oh, you know, well, well, we've got to appoint a special grand marshal or whatever that thing <laughs> is, you know. Yeah. And, and I'm going to, I, she made the uh, de Justice Department release some of the stuff they had gotten, or she did it. And what they should have, I don't why didn't they do this? Why didn't they say, judge? Uh, you should recuse yourself because you were appointed by Donald Trump. 
Why didn't they even ask that? Because she's a federal judge in Florida. Yeah, but why? Why? Right? Don't they yeah. ask her to recuse herself? She right. should have recused herself without even thinking about it. Yeah, well. You know. I think, I think it's a waste of time at Donald Trump trying to get the government to drag their feet. Uh, I mean, the, the, the Justice Department has had all these documents for four weeks already. What are they, what's the people going to look at and say, this should be seen or this shouldn't be seen? It's already been seen. Yeah, right. It's why, ridiculous. Why, why even have this, this extra person in the, in the picture? It's really ridiculous. But anyway, so I keep getting these things from, from, from and finally I wrote them and I just said, stop already. You know, I'm, I'm not on right now. You know, so. and, and, I, and I'm not in the position lately in my mind to, to argue these things, you know. I'm just not as sharp as I was at arguing, you know. And what do I need to argue at this point in my life? What are you smiling about, Kevin? Arguing with Phil. <laughs> it's useless, you know. It's like arguing with this, a blank piece of paper. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, why should I? Uh, he thinks he's gonna. He thinks he's gonna change your mind, and you'll be a Republican. He's not gonna change my mind, and uh, you know, I mean, the uh, the thing that some people are suspecting is that there, the reason those folders were empty was because there was something in them, and they want to know what was removed from those folders. Right. You know, I mean, Donald Trump has been doing a lot of hinky stuff. Uh, even Bill Barr thinks he's going to wind up in jail. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, and uh, <laughs> who's talking? Who's oh, what? Just uh, like Pam. Pam? What's going on over there, there you go. Jeff? That worked good, Jeff. You turned Jeff up has the to volume. mute a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he turned up the volume, and now we can hear. Is somebody going on vacation, uh, Jeff? Oh, I've got a cousin of mine here. She's yeah, talking. Okay, about well, wait a minute. Let's listen to what she's saying. That's. Uh, I'm gonna listen. That's all for a while. So are we? Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna put it on. Yeah. Just go get the ball gag out. So uh, we're coming up on this is uh, what 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 oh this is Labor Day right? Yeah. Is this Labor Day? It is. It, it, you know what's really funny about Labor Day? When's the last time we ever honored labor on Labor Day? <laughs> you know, it's just nothing but stories about people trying to get on airplanes that aren't taking off. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Hey, Alex, remember Jerry Lewis? Yes, you know, I've, been, I've been obsessed with Jerry Lewis YouTube. I'm watching them constantly. I don't because I, I think you said you love Jerry Lewis. No, but well, I think you said you liked him. I don't know. No, well, when wrong. I was when I was a kid, I liked him. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you know what? You talk about that movie, and they say that the the National Archives have what is it? The day the clown cried. Yep. That's amazing. Do you think that in like 2025 they will release that and we'll see something? Because it's, I don't know if talk it, about it. Right? I don't know if it's if it's going to be made ever be made available. Because I hear there like, are some people who have copies. There's supposedly somebody has a copy in uh, in Hollywood, and he invites no people copy. over once a year to watch it. This was and a it's film. Really are you, are you like familiar that. with what we're talking about, everybody? The Day the Crown Clyde Cried was a film that Jerry Lewis made about a clown who works in a concentration camp leading children into the ovens. Boy, what a rom-com that is. Boy, that is such a fun fest. Is it going to be like worse than like springtime for Hitler in Germany, like the producers? No, like, no, or, that, I mean, well, that was funny because it yeah. was meant to be mm. funny. This wasn't meant to be funny. It was tasteless or something. No, right? it wasn't even tasteless. It was supposedly one of the worst films ever made. Oh, it was just bad. It wasn't okay. Yeah, yeah. So you know that—that's what happened with uh, uh, with the day the clown cried. 
I mean, I would love to see it. Everybody would love to see it. I've seen portions of it. I've seen clips wow. of it. Wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've seen clips, but that's it. You have connections, Alex. <laughs> no, it's not connections. You can get go online and find them. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if you put in the day the clown cried in on YouTube and there's something there, you know. So. Mm. But anyway, so anyway, uh, 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 Josh, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin your show for later. But what's been on your mind lately? Well, yesterday really nothing because I worked like sixteen hours yesterday for a something that I won't mention on air because I would consider it business confidential, and I wouldn't say it on air because I don't want to get in any trouble. But yeah. Uh, we had some stuff happen and pretty much the whole staff was there all day and most of the night so I didn't uh, get what did some paint cans explode or something no no <laughs> nothing like that Bill Meyer wandered into the warehouse yeah nothing like that we just you know had some stuff we had to take care of so it was a long day um, so I know the president gave a speech yesterday I haven't seen it um, Really, so I started I uh, watching it, and I just know too I, much. I've been drowsy lately, so I fell asleep. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, you know, I, I know it was at Independence Hall. I'd heard that they were going to go there, and you know, I've been there. It's very nice. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't understand why. I, I don't particularly. Uh, I, I almost was going to play it, you know, here before you came on, and I, I started. I had it on mute. I don't, I don't know what the point of the two dress Marines standing behind him. The whole time yeah, was. Yeah. I, I don't care for that. I didn't like that garbage when Trump did it, and I don't know what that was, but uh, I, I didn't like that. I mean, unless there was some point to it that I don't know yet, that I would have to have watched it, and then it would make sense. But I, I don't, I don't know what that was I, about. I I, that, it didn't make any sense. Joe. That was, uh, I mean, like I said, unless there's something in the speech about, I, I don't know. But I mean, that to me looked like well, a well, all I like could put on, and I, I, I don't know. I well, just, I all like I could figure all. out is that he was fed up. You know, he was fed up with the way the Republicans yeah. are acting. You know, and the way it's been. Uh, 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 you know, it, it, the well, way, I mean, the way uh, so I guess is what I'm saying is I don't really have a problem with the speech. I have heard uh, like a, a few snippets about it, and, and I under I, so. But I guess I don't I don't understand how you give like an anti-fascist speech with two members of the military standing by. I mean, I just didn't really understand that. I mean, you will listen you know, because right because I mean, like fascism to me is sort of in a definition is like you know the means of political enforcement through the use of violence. Um, and that violence is typically carried out at some point by the military that the fascist leadership is able to take control of, mm -hmm. a la, you know, Germany or whatever. So I was like, what? What? Well, what is, uh, I mean, my question Biden's was, not a fascist. Say, I'm, I'm just saying. Well, wait a minute. But my I was like, what, my, what is that? My, I, don't, my, I don't get that. My, but question, I don't know. my question is, does this come under the category of being a political speech, or does it come under the category of being a uh, uh, just a, a what do you call it? a pep pep talk to America? You know. Well, I think he looks at it as a little bit of both. I mean, I think mostly. Look, yeah, look, it sounded to be what I heard. Mo I heard that probably half of it, and it sounded both. Yeah, uh, I mean, in the long run, it's it sounded it's, like it's, it was you know a month before a pol you know an election speech. It sounded you know. A yeah, it's, bit. I, it's certainly aimed at being a political speech geared toward the midterms and the election. Um, you know, and one of the reasons for that is just because if you ask enough people, you're going to find a lot of people that don't agree with anything that he said, which makes it sort of political by its nature. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're never going to be able to help that in this country. So, I mean, but it's it's mostly political, but, you know, mm -hmm. I have no issue with that. I mean, he's got the right to give the, a speech of any type, any time he wants. I mean, Trump gave, you know, but dozens, if not hundreds of those kinds of speeches. Uh, 
But like I said, in the interest of being fair, I didn't care when he did stupid stuff, like put two dressed Marines behind him the whole time. I, I just, I don't know. It was the first thing I saw. Well, isn't that um, a misuse I, of the military? I, but anyway. uh, well, I mean, it's yeah. Uh, it's Alan? allowed. I just don't know what the point was. Like what? It what? Sounds, it sounds just, like I'm the only one that saw the whole thing. So the first thing he he said is he's only going after MAGA Republicans. The rest of the Republicans are okay. Well, how do you define a MAGA Republican? Well, right. Somebody that supports Trump, I guess. Well, you know, it's no, funny. That's a, not. a lot of these Republicans are starting to abandon Trump. Yeah, we've fact. heard that for a while. Well, no, they they are. I I, I, I agree. Which with was that. the political portion of the speech, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. then he, then the other half is he spoke about his accomplishments, kind of like a political mm-hmm. thing, and not about Trump. And then he gave another speech. What uh, today was it? Today? Uh, I think so. Yeah. 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 On on, uh, on the economy. Yeah, and more about his accomplishments and yeah, things well, like that. Well, why didn't he do that all last night? Why didn't he just put it all in one? Well, I mean, I think that he did, but I, I think it's the beginning of a small tour <laughs> for political reasons leading up to the midterms. I mean, yeah, I think you're going to see him. Uh, he's, sl- he's, he's gaining more popularity and more steam, and I think they're slowly but surely going to you know, run him out there. You know, I mean, which is fine. That no, is what that, that's fine, but presidents the fact do. is that if it is for political purposes... Then it should be considered a political speech, and the Democratic Party should be paying for it. Uh, yeah, they may have. I, I I don't know. I mean, or like at least for part of it. I mean, they might have paid for like the. Meanwhile, the you use, got Kevin McCarthy uh, doing his 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 uh, tour down south as well. Right. Yeah, but yeah. It, but are the networks mm-hmm. covering that. Yeah. Well, I don't know. My understanding was the networks didn't cover that speech last night either. Uh, it, Not I as mean, much. No, not the, uh, especially at least not the non-paid networks like uh, NBC, ABC, CB. You know, I, like I cable networks that. might have. I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I heard from some people at work. Was I, it was I it saw it live on ABC. So you know, uh, at least in this market where I live, they said it wasn't on anything. Well, except, uh, 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 Alan just uh, said he saw CNN it. On, and, he and saw. He's, uh, Alan said he saw it on ABC. Live. Okay. Live. Well, so. Yeah. Maybe right. some, so maybe it was up to local, uh, <clears throat> listen, you know, I would local be, affiliates, I, whether or not they wanted to put on American Ninja Warrior, you know, something like that, or whatever the fuck that shit's called, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, I think it is unusual, though, because Biden has kept pretty quiet about Trump and about the Republicans and so yeah. on, and I think it's almost as though it seems to me he got to a point where he just said, I can't take this anymore. Yeah, that's what it sounded like to me—a fed-up speech. Yeah, yeah, and it, it it coincides with some rebound in his uh, power and popularity and ability for people to listen because it happens to come at a time with some accomplishments and uh, a, a natural decrease in some things that were aggravating people, like gas prices, inflation. Gas you know, prices are down what by a, like by a dollar maybe more. Yeah, quite a bit from the from the earlier in the summer. Yeah, average sixty. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, it, it ha- it's it's coming at a time when people don't necessarily hear Joe Biden and you know roll their eyes or whatever. <laughs> you know, um, his his popularity or approval rating, you know, is up. I don't know, like five points or something in the last 30 days, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, that's a good bump, you know, in in 30 days uh, (laughs) in the overall. So it it comes at a time like that. That's that's good for him, I guess, you know, and and good for the Democratic Party. I mean, I'm I'm, that's just what I'm observing. I mean, I'm, I'm not here advocating. I mean, that's what a political analyst probably say you scored some points no one's against that so. yeah but i mean if trump had done the same thing while he was president i'd be sitting here griping about him using well, the airwaves I, for that sort of thing yeah, you know, i did it a little bit i mean he's i think the speech is you know mostly fine presidents you know travel around and they give speeches um well he had the two soldiers right. behind him and i, I don't uh, and, understand and, that and i, I, mean, I, I wonder really no wait a minute but i wonder if trump was sitting there watching it going god i should have done that yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean, he did do s- s- weird things like that sometimes. You know, I, I don't even remember 
an example I can give you right now. I mean, it's been a couple of years, but I just mean, I, he used to do stuff like that, and I would just be like, what? Yeah. What is that? Can't you just act yeah, like a normal the, president? He used to park the helicopters behind him and the, the airplanes behind him, just like that. Yeah. Yeah, well, he used to yeah, use, he was, yeah, he yeah. used to use, uh, when he was running for office, right. he used yeah. uh, Air Force One as a prop. He would pull it right, right in, right oh, behind yeah, the right. stage. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and I didn't care much for that either. I mean, it, it's not like well, the worst Well, my question thing. I mean, is, yeah, who was saying. playing paying for Air Force One? Was it the Republican Party? No, it was you and me. Really? I mean, they didn't have to pay for that? Well, I think the campaign at times pays you know like all presidents does pay at times for certain things mm -hmm. probably when well, no there's golf yeah i mean you know they i mean I, I don't even know the specifics but i mean i believe that at, at times the campaign will reimburse for things like fuel costs for air force one and uh you know, they won't pay with the, the with the main things that he would have had no matter where he was. You know, like his main Secret Service detail, right? I mean, they're not going to pay anything for that. But the, the 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 two parties or the campaigns will at time, I believe, reimburse for things like fuel cost. They will reimburse certain municipalities at times for, like, the overtime that they run. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if, you know, they bring in 30 extra officers for a shift for crowd control or traffic blocking and it costs the municipality a lot of money and they will reimburse mm -hmm. for things like that i mean i've read about you know stuff like that before so that's why i didn't care too much because all presidents are going to do that i mean they have to campaign they have to travel when they travel that apparatus that is you know the presidential airlift and all that goes with them so there's nothing that can be done about that um but I think when you start using certain things like that as like props in your photo opportunity, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I gotta watch the speech, and maybe there'll be some point to those Marines. Maybe he turns around and says, "These two guys are fucking won the Medal of Honor." So by the know. way, <laughs> by the way, tonight it doesn't seem like anybody's on our uh, on our uh, chat. Uh, is there a problem with the chat tonight? I saw it working. I did notice that your uh, your link is not on the is not on the uh, oh, YouTube. The, the YouTube link isn't there. Your call in link. It's usually there. It's not. Oh, I see. That was because I had to redo it last night, and I oh, guess I didn't put yeah, that on. Yeah, that's one thing. Okay, no, there's somebody there's there. There's somebody. Okay. CM, well, it doesn't matter. That doesn't. They. You can all go to gabnet.net. Yeah. Okay, and go cl click on the thing that says Zoom, and you get you to us. You can also go to Zoom if you've called in before, and it's right there. <laughs> yeah, right. so, yeah. CNN, uh, chat working. Yeah. So, CNN uh, says the Marines were there uh, uh, for a show that, uh, for, for, to show that he um, likes the military. You know? Well, no, but that, that's stupid. But, we, yeah, we, we, are we to assume he hates the military? No, well, he always ends his speeches with "God bless our troops." He always does that because it was yeah. But I mean, I I think I that kind of put me off. I didn't understand why they were standing there. Yeah, it was and, strange to me too. And at points, there were, the lighting was down so bad oh, that oh, you could uh, see just the gloves. Did you did, wait, did you notice one other thing about the lighting? They did a bad lighting job on him last night. His face yeah. was green. He looked like the Incredible <laughs> Hulk. Yeah. yeah. He Hulk, yeah. Yeah. Have to check that out. I don't know. I mean, yeah, the the marine thing, it was just odd. I I mean, I said, I mean, it's not illegal or anything like that. I just I think, think the marines are in some hellhole like Ohio or something. Yeah. yeah. yeah just weird. Okay. Well, okay. also we are we are I guess I guess we're rid of or <laughs> through with uh Serena Williams. Uh, yep. She lost yeah, tonight. She finally lost mm -hmm. tonight. You know, she I I, I think I think it's wonderful that <clears throat> that uh you know, they gave her a real proper send off, okay? But then they had to do it three nights in a row. Yeah, <laughs> they wore her out and at seven thirty every night. Well, I well, mean what time was it out there? Here here's the deal. Here comes uh oh I don't know, uh, 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 uh Tanya Tennis, okay? And she's playing uh Serena Williams. 
All right. So now here they come out, and here's Oprah doing a thing about Serena, and Queen Latifah doing a thing about Serena. And by the way, here's Tanya Tennis. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, I felt so sorry for whoever was playing her. Yeah, they probably gave her a gold watch. Which... And even even the one that was that won tonight was like, oh, how do you feel like beating Serena? Oh, that's good. See you later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now let's talk to Serena. Oh, Serena, how yeah. do you feel? Oh, cry for us, Serena. You know. And she didn't. Yeah. And, she uh, choked up a little bit. Uh, no, she yeah, didn't. Yeah, was an, I, what I saw of it was a nice little speech. She said, yeah. without, uh, without my sister, there would be no Serena. You know, and it was a really nice... Mm -hmm. uh, it was She's really a nice. Player, hey, listen, she was the greatest of all time. There's no question about it. Yep. You know, and um, Tiger Woods of tennis. Huh? She is Tiger Woods of the tennis world. She <laughs> maybe is a little greater than ti Tiger Woods really? at tennis. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't follow <laughs> tennis too much. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, and and, and Tiger was terrific, but you know, he's. Mm -hmm. I, Hey, you know, I, is like watching paint dry. But what do you got? You know, in, in in the majors, maybe you got twenty years before your body starts falling apart. I mean, you got a guy like Rafael Nadal right now, who's a just probably he's a, he's almost a goat himself. You know, uh, and it, he uh, he's been having you know physical problems for the last couple of years. You know, it, it's it, hard on your joints bouncing around and all that. Kind oh of yeah, stuff. absolutely, mm -hmm. Charlene. Oh, uh, is your sports Emmy still over there in the back? No, it's not here. It's not in the studio. Because, because you, I, you don't like in the sports. Bathroom. Good. What? That's how you got your sports Emmy. <laughs> You're going over sports. You know how you really don't like. Oh yeah, like once a year I have to talk about sports so they don't come take it away from me. <laughs> You're good, though. You know your sports. Even. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What have you been smoking? Every every network's been trying to hire me, you know. Absolutely. Um, well, I, I, sent, I sent you the reason that yeah. we were all working yesterday. Oh, I see. Well, that, that I would say, is a good Overtime? reason. That's why you get the big bucks, Josh. Mm -hmm. It was a huge paint spill, okay? No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Luckily, it was not. No, luckily, it was not. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I mean, uh, I, uh, you know, I, 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 I felt sorry that she didn't win again tonight. It would have been nice if she had, you know, really made a good showing in the end. But come on, you know, she had a, she had a baby, and then she was out of playing for a while, and she had some health problems, and then she came back, and she couldn't, you know, she. He, he, once you lose, you know, the routine, I think it kind of, it, it, it's very hard for you to come back from that. Uh, it, it didn't work very well for Tiger Woods either. No, no, it really didn't work well for Tiger Woods. Uh, you know, but he did come back. He did win one more green jacket, yep. you know, after people said he wasn't going to come back. So that was a big comeback. Well, he still hasn't quit, but hmm? yeah, yeah. Well, he, I think you, you can't roll a tr roll a car and then break your leg in eighty places and then come back very easily. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as some people say, well, "What does that have to do with golf?" It has everything to do with golf. I mean, your yep. le your legs being uh, able to, you know. Somebody told me he was driving away. This is this is years ago. He was driving away from his wife's house. They had gotten a fight, and she attacked him with what? A golf club? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I thought it was BS. Deck. Really? Yeah. No, it's true. Oh, wow. Then he ran the car into a tree. Oh. That yeah, wasn't Lindsay. That, that wasn't Lindsay Vaughn, was it? No. Uh, I think, her name. Well, maybe it was right around that time. Was she Swedish or something? See, the fact that I know these things is why I have a sports Emmy. Okay, That's right. I just want you to know that. I just want you to. Right. That's you... when he was addicted to porn. Who? And it was. And oh, it was, was he addicted really... to porn? No, he, he was, was a sex addict. Or something he was right? addicted to sex. Yeah. He was addicted. Well, who? I'm a guy. Okay. You're a no. guy. Aren't we all addicted to sex? <laughs> you know. I, I yeah, but we don't all get Emmys for it. <laughs> 
I didn't get an <laughs> Emmy for sex. <laughs> uh, let's see, sports, water sports. Well, I have one sports Emmy, and then the other Emmy is for performance in a show. Okay. Yeah. So. Hmm. I have two okay. Emmys, one non-sports. That was for the comedy thing? No. No. It was for a tech, not, techno, technology show. Well, well, you definitely have that. Yeah. Yeah. So. And that one, that one's, one was just for me. See, I mean, the one, the sports Emmy I won was a group Emmy for a oh. show, for a, for the uh, Beta Breakers <laughs> wrap-up show at Channel 5. So there were about seven of us that all got Emmys for that. So uh, that one I didn't get on my own. But the other one I got on my own. The other one was just, just me, you know. And Alex, are you going to make an EGOT? <laughs> Yeah, right. I, I, my Broadway show <laughs> opens next week. Right, right. Yeah. 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 Uh, you, 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 could, you could label your Broadway show. I used to be somebody important. I used to be a big shot. Oh, a big shot. I, sorry, I always get that wrong. It's one of my favorite <laughs> things. It used to be a big shot. Like uh, Public Enemy, right? Public Enemy. Right, right. Right. It does look like a lot of the networks didn't carry that speech last night, I guess. There's really? a, there's an article in the Washington Post headlined, uh, as Biden warned about democracy's collapse, TV networks aired reruns. Well, you know, the thing is that for the most part, they don't need to run it on the major networks because nobody watches the major networks anymore anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but they ran them on, you know, CBS's uh, uh streaming service and they ran them on MSNBC and uh, probably a couple of others probably CNBC as well and then they ran it on uh, you know ABC has their streaming service uh, Fox has their streaming service uh, pl plus they ha you know all of these have their uh, some of them are online some of them MSNBC Fox mm -hmm. and so on have their own channels they were all on there so why do you have to put them on Fox local stations? You know, there's no mm -hmm. reason, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I can see why they didn't carry it. I mean, if I were a station, I wouldn't carry it. I would much rather make money off my ad revenue than off of the, off of the president's speech, you know, mm -hmm. give up time for the president's speech, so. Well, people are currently you know, somewhat detached from, you know, when their politicians talk to them because they've been lied to a lot, misled a lot. It's a bit of a circus at times. You know, I mean, uh, hey, you said to me, uh, hey, you can keep watching, you know, the second uh, go around of uh, Vikings on Amazon uh, streaming or watch this speech. I'd probably say, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll replay it later on uh, C-SPAN on the internet or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, people just are a little, people are a little worn out, and this uh, this return of Trump to the news cycle twenty four seven. Oh my God! His own problems is probably not going to help that. I mean, I'm no. Well, I'm, I, you know, I was, I was so happy that I, I felt that once he was no longer president, we wouldn't have to see his face again. Uh, no. And every day we see his face. <laughs> right. And it's, it's going to remain that way probably right up until he is either yeah, not reelected or says that he's not running for reelection. But didn't these one news the didn't these news outfits learn their lesson from the last election? That in mm -hmm. fact, if Donald Trump got elected, it was because of them. You know, he didn't have. No, to, they didn't learn. He, they, they don't learn anything. <laughs> I mean, how many uh, how many advertising dollars did the Republican Party save as a result of Donald Trump's big mouth? They were on there every day oh. discussing him. You know, even before he got the nomination. I mean, if anybody, you know, if uh, I have to say this, if anybody created Donald Trump, it was MSNBC and CNN. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I don't disagree. I mean, you know, Fox, I... Fox didn't have to invent him because Fox already had Rupert Murdoch who decided that Trump would be good for Fox business. Yeah. And so 
in fact, I watched a documentary on Rupert Murdoch, and he didn't like Trump in the beginning. He didn't want to have anything to do with Trump. And then he saw that he'd be good for ratings. And so he said, okay, we're, we're, in, the, we're in the Trump business. So, I mean, that was a whole different story. But MSNBC and CNN should be ashamed of themselves. They did go out of their way. I mean, look, for as much as they're trying now to undo, you know, what they did, look, the Morning Joe uh, had a lot to do with his exposure to non-hardcore right-wing people. I mean, you know, Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski had him on a lot and let him talk and say whatever he wanted and sort of helped him along and now you know they have all this buyer's remorse or whatever and the more obnoxious uh, he got fine, but yeah. it's a little too little too late the more obnoxious he got the more they talked about him yeah i mean you know that mika kind of aggravated me with that you know starry look in her eyes you know back in the primary season when they went to new hampshire and had him on live in the little bar they were at, you know, every day, and it was, you know, got a little out of hand, if you ask me. Uh, uh, Alan? So, mm. before he was president, Larry King interviewed him and Melania right after they got married. You know, it was kind of a yawn, you know. I mean, Larry King was, was great. He was the best. But interviewing... Well, Donald he was Trump, great for the full hour. <laughs> He was, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know, you know, it wasn't one of his greatest, I mean, he did a good job at interviewing Donald Trump and Melania, I, I think when Melania was just learning English, but boy, was she hot looking in that, in the, you know. Well, that's fine, you know, uh, but uh, that's not the reason I voted for president, so I can jerk off to his wife. <laughs> yeah. Uh, me. Uh, you know, I was, I was, uh, I was glad to see that uh, uh, Sarah Palin lost her her bid for. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Oh, did she? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah she did not. Uh, she didn't. She didn't. Uh, First win. Democrat running up there in uh, Alaska. Really? Yeah. And yeah. who? Who are they? They're running for a seat held by who? A, a Republican or a Democrat? It was a Republican. Ah, uh, yeah, probably was a Republican. Well, I mean, the, it was for the primary, right? That she didn't make it. I Correct. think so, but yeah. I, think I don't she know on the ballot for the for the primary. Yeah, I don't know if it was a I don't know if it was a special election to replace somebody. I I, I don't I can't remember, but yeah. uh, I just saw that she she didn't win. You know, she lost to that other. Uh, I there was another woman that she was running against that I I can't remember her name, but uh, but yeah, she lost. That wasn't Murkowski, was it? No. No, no. Yeah, no it was, was, just, uh, it was I mean, someone I'd never ever heard of. So you know, obviously, someone up there local that I don't think had had any sort of national exposure in the past, and uh, she didn't win. So maybe we're rid of her for a while. Well, I I so, think she'll probably give up now. You know. Yeah, I would hope. I mean, maybe she'll start her own social media network so she can get the truth out there. By the way, you do know that Trump hasn't been paying his bills on his social media network. I, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> Mary Pelota. Yeah. Mary Pelota. El, El Tola. El Tola? El Tola. El Tola. Is that right? Yeah. El Tola? El Tola. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, I mean, it's... You know, it's nice that she lost. I mean, she, uh, you know, she's an obvious crackhead, so. <laughs> crackhead, loosey, nice. crackhead. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, it's, uh, this is the last thing I want to do is listen to her, you know. I mm. mean, it, it'd be like to have that Michelle Bachman come back. I mean, Jesus, I, I can't listen to that. Someone talking in circles, complete nonsense over and over again every time. They're on television. Where was so, Michelle Bachman from? Minnesota. I Minnesota. Believe. I believe so, yeah. She disappeared, right? Yeah. Remember, she did something there at the end that really kind of finished herself off. Did she use campaign funds or? I don't know. You know, all I know something is like that. You said know, she was like around a, for a while and she was disgusting. And then all of a sudden oh, she yeah. wasn't disgusting anymore because she wasn't around. Yeah. You know, she 
was going to end up leaving, and then right around the same time, I think there was allegations or decent evidence of something. Mm -hmm. And I don't even remember what it was. Uh, I thought it was misuse of campaign funds, but I can't remember. Oh, oh yeah, she was going to run for president. There, well, she actually did at that, at what, in 16, I think, right? You know, mm -hmm. at the very, very beginning. Uh, you know what I want to bring up here, did. though, that I can't figure yeah. out? The Republicans make a big deal out of this, and and I can't understand why. And that's the whole un Hunter Biden deal. I mean, just because Hunter Biden may have done something, let's say wholly illegal, let's say he did, what does that have to do with Joe Biden? It, it, it really doesn't. Oh, I see what happened. What? Don Young died, special election put this Peltola lady in, and then the next election. Yeah. But I think she's got to run Sarah again. Taylor will be back. Yeah, maybe, but, okay. uh, but I think well, she's got to run again. Well, she'll run again against uh, Peltola, Nick Begich, Begich, hmm. and Sarah Palin. Those are both Republicans. Oh, so Palin will be running again. She'll be running again the next so election. So she's not finished. This is a short term coverage for the Don Young who died. Did she bring up that she could see Russia from her toilet seat or something? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Tina Fey will be back in business again a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what it is. It's a short-term thing, so they, she really doesn't care, I guess. Yeah. But they're going to run again. Okay. Well, you know. But anyway, so anyway, uh, 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 it's Labor Day. And as I said, you know, how uh, when's the last time we really honored labor on Labor Day? Right? We hold telethons and we uh, we hold barbecues. And, oh, by the way, I was watching Gilbert Godfrey. And they were mm -hmm. doing a roast of George Takai at the Friars Club. Mm -hmm. So he's doing one gay joke after another. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, "How can you tell you're at a, uh, how can you tell you're at a gay Labor Day picnic? The hot dogs taste like shit." <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless Gilbert. I miss him. I so miss him. I and find you know, that very offensive. I think that anyone who sponsors him, we should. <laughs> you know, the thing is, though. Here, here's the thing. He was doing one gay joke after another, and people were laughing at it, and nobody was laughing more than George Takai, okay? There and you know. and, and uh, uh, what was terrific about that is it shows that if you don't have any malice in what you're doing, how can people be offended by it? You know, it, intent is what's important. Now, if I just told that joke myself right here, uh, everybody would go, oh, he's in bad taste. They may have said I'm in bad taste right now for having told that joke. But it mm -hmm. was at a Friars Club roast, which are filthy. They, if you've ever been to a Friars Club roast, they're filthy. And hot he, dogs are brown. Huh? And the hot dogs are yeah. brown. And he, uh, he just, he was having it, and Takai was loving every minute of it, and the audience was laughing. And mm -hmm. this was just a few years ago, so we were already into this everything being politically correct and so on and so forth. Yeah. But you not for one second felt that any of these jokes that, that uh, Gilbert was telling were meant to hurt, you know? Mm. They were meant to make you laugh about yourself, about yeah. other people, you know. Uh, so. well, it's, it's called a joke. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, That means I, I didn't mean it. I tell <laughs> jokes all the time, including Jewish jokes. I mean. Yeah. You know? And then somebody says, oh, that's in poor taste. I said, not to me, I'm Jewish. Well, no, I like the fact that I can tell Jew jokes and then nobody can come, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, you're anti-Semitic. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah, right. You know. Listen, I'm a Jew. I hang out with other Jews. Isn't, right. isn't, that, enough re <laughs> isn't that enough reason to not like them? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess if you, if you don't like some of them, then... I guess you are anti-Semitic. Right? Am I right, Jeff? Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, we you. have us on the show tonight, so. I'm, I'm back on. <laughs> Took a little bit of uh, 
No, but we have this... Re-energizing yeah. my system. Yeah, well, the thing is that gets me about holidays like Labor Day is that we lose all track of what they're about. It was meant to celebrate labor. Mm. Yeah. Which is a very, a very important... There is no labor, hardly. It's kind of a socialist holiday if you think about it. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. And and yet we don't we don't honor labor any longer, <clears throat> you know. We, we what do you tur turn it on? They go well. What's happening on Labor Day? Well, the people are having they're, they're at the airport and the planes aren't taking off, you know. <laughs> to begin with, who goes on a trip during Labor Day? Why not? Who? But who does? Who does it over Christmas? Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? And then you say, oh, I'm, I was stuck at the airport and they weren't, my plane wasn't taking off. Yeah, but you did this on Labor Day weekend. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. I would never get on a plane. I wouldn't get on a plane on a Wednesday, to be honest with you. But Labor Day <laughs> is, you know, is ridiculous. What's no, my, Wednesday? My wife and I have, t well, my friend Shecky, who loves taking trips. Okay, he goes everywhere. He, exotic cruises like to, he went to hang out with the penguins in Iceland, in, uh, in the Antarctic, right? That sounds cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, he says it's not as cool as you think because you've never smelled penguin shit. No. Oh. <laughs> he said, when you're standing in the middle of a bunch of penguins, he says, suddenly there's this odor that is not to be believed of desiccated oh. fish. Okay. Ah. Um, oh. But... Uh, Shecky, uh, finally, he was going to go out to California this weekend, and then he decided not to because he just said, I, I, I can't go through the process of getting yeah. in a line and, uh -huh. you know, going through TSA. He even has a, a speed thing with P TSA, but he says, then you got to get on the plane, and the plane is stuffy, <laughs> and all the people are, you know, farting, and it's just, you know, it's terrible. That's and, why we drive everywhere. I mean, you know, why? My wife and I, we travel a lot. We've yeah, but if you did it this week, if you did it this weekend, it'd be bumper to bumper. Uh, sometimes it is. I mean, it, yeah, it depends where you're you, going. You know, but when, yeah. if I were to go on a vacation, I mean, if I still, I don't know if I can drive any longer. I would drive. I would absolutely drive. Oh, yeah, instead that's, of that's what we do. I mean, for various reasons, the scenery and other yeah. things. But part of it is because of what you said is that airlines are not trustworthy. They treat you very poorly. I mean, they give you the sort of customer service that in many other businesses you wouldn't accept, but you're accepting it from them because there's not that many choices among them. And that's basically your only means of travel unless you decide to drive, you know? I, mean, I, I didn't fly in an airplane till I was 17 years old. For some reason, I just never got around to it. And then it was a military plane because I was flying on a uh, PR junket with uh, some as some Air Force colonel or something like that. But anyway, but that was the first time I ever flew. But prior to that, when I was a kid, I always thought about, I, I always saw pictures of people flying. To begin with, they were all wearing, they were dressed to the nines. The guys were all wearing suits. Am I right, Jeff? And the yes. women were all wearing beautiful dresses and they got their best yeah. coats and stuff like that. And, and, and then they would serve you a full meal and mm. they were all, you know, all the, uh, the hostesses, <clears throat> which were called stewardesses in those days, uh, mm. were very accommodating. You know, anything I can do for you, you know, coffee, coffee tea, tea or me. Or yeah. me, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, it was classy. It was just a classy kind of thing to do. And it but only cost. It, it and was all, everything. And all it cost was three dollars. <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> Who was it told me today that they took a flight, where from uh, one place to another that I heard, and it was like eighteen dollars back in those days. Eighteen dollars. That's nothing. Yeah. You know. It. I do think it's the cost is pretty high now, right? I mean, like I said, we don't fly, so I don't know, but I hear people talking about some of it and I'm thinking I just okay you know I, I can't she believe it Shecky over he's not doing it now but over mm -hmm. Christmas Shecky was going to go to Singapore catch a boat and take a boat and go right mm -hmm. plane flight for that $8,000 round trip 
Oh, that's not bad. But for, that was like first I, I class. I thought you said it was 18,000 last night. 18,000. Oh, yeah, I mean, it, I just said 18,000. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why some people do, you know, don't do the driving. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. You know, like from where I live, for because example. Because it's more fun. To, because you know, number one, you're gonna not going to drive to Singapore. That's no, for yeah, start. That's true. And that's if you cool. want to get going now, because it's going to take a while. <laughs> yeah. You know. yeah. I mean, I very nearly had a, another position within my company a couple of weeks ago that would have involved travel, and that you know was the down part about it. One or two of the places that would have been you know flight necessary. Mm -hmm. But some of the other ones, they're like, you think you'd want to drive or fly? And I'm like, look, you know, from, from here to Baltimore, for example, from where I live, is like six and a half hours, maybe seven. I'm, I'm like, I, I would drive. Mm -hmm. I mean, by the time I drive from my house to this airport, park mm -hmm. my car, get on the plane, fly down there, mm -hmm. get another rental car. I mean, what's it's it's and all of that involves a hassle to me because mm -hmm. I don't like dealing with people or anything like that. I mean, just right. I I'll say something in different. the car and leave. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to tell yeah. you something different because we have a very new small airport in uh, New Haven that takes you to various places in Florida and Georgia and things like that. Mm -hmm. And Pam has got an issue. <laughs> with her mother. Her mother's 93 years old and she's got problems or whatever. Mm -hmm. So she takes her to, to her sister's house in Florida or Georgia and drops her mom all, off of there. But she takes her mother, she, she goes with her. It cost her, I think, 150 bucks. And she gets there, drops it, her at the airport, her sister picks up her mother there, mm -hmm. and within an hour or so, she gets back on the flight going back. Oh. Oh, and it's a, it's wonderful. And the people there are nice, and they don't drive you crazy, and it's easy to get on, and it's a relatively smaller airplane, I think. Do you, do you remember when you could check your baggage, and they didn't charge you for it? No, it's no. not any of that it's stuff. It's $25 a bag. Yeah, well, <laughs> Pen doesn't even have a bag. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, it, it's, 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 a, it's horrible. I mean, and, and then it, look at what they're charging for flights, and they're not giving you the service they used to. Service? Mm -hmm. We don't care about service. We don't even care if the goddamn plane doesn't take off, you know? Yeah. We'll I keep drive, uh, I drive yeah. Yeah. Every year I drive to Las Vegas. I don't fly. By the time I pack the right things, so it goes through security, and get on the plane and get to the airport an hour before, and get and fly there and get off the plane, and of course the plane is at the farthest terminal away from where I need to be, get my baggage, get on a tram to the rental car center, get a rental car, I'm three quarters of the way there in my vehicle. Oh yeah, And it's no. a lot more relaxed. No, if you had took a flight from San Francisco or Oakland right. to right. Las Vegas, right. first you got to drive to the airport. That's right. Then you got to wait, uh, maybe be there an hour oh. ahead of time, right? Then you board the plane. Then if you're lucky, the plane takes off on time and it lands. By the time you've landed, you probably could have driven most of the way to Las Vegas. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It's about a 12-hour drive. Yeah. And uh, we figured that by the time you consider how you got to pack differently, and when I drive, I can take anything I want. But anyhow, you know, it takes about eight hours to go through the airport to fly and end up with a car on the other side. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. So I mean, you know, the, the, when I was a kid, the idea of traveling air air travel it was a fancy thing you did, you know, sure. and they were oh they were very accommodating. Anything you want, you want a hot towelette for your hands, you know. I you think they may charge you for the smoke. <laughs> what? Cigarette smoke. Well, there was cigarette smoke. <laughs> yes, there was. <laughs> you could smoke on on, on airplanes. <laughs> uh, but they did recirculate the air within the airplane, so you know. 
The smoke did not linger that long. The, I think the smoking was in the back, if I'm not mistaken. I love how they have a smoking and non-smoking area on an airplane or a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not going to smell the smoke. <laughs> yeah. but Well, I mean, planes are also worked on by human beings. Mm -hmm. And I've been around maintenance and engineering my entire life, and I can tell you that I don't trust human beings. Well, uh, I look, I used to go in a customer when I did uh, mobile stuff. Uh, I used to go to net jets, which is where people rent private planes, and there would be their mechanics over in the corner on a Wednesday morning throwing up in the trash can talking about how drunk they were last night. Yeah. Working on a fucking private jet that someone mm -hmm. just paid $150,000 to rent to take them. Somewhere. Well, you know, so, you, there is one thing you have when you're driving. You are controlling that automobile. Correct. Okay? You're in charge of controlling that automobile. On airplanes, you're vulnerable because you've got people flying the airplanes and you don't know what condition they're in. You know? Right. Man, did I get fucked up last night. Yeah, we're fine. Go I've seen it. Huh? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't remember. Was it like Ryanair or somebody like that? I mean, you know, 60 Minutes did that expose four or five years ago where a couple of their mechanics did some whistleblowing on them about their shady maintenance practices and then they fired them and then they you know went to the media and 60 minutes did that deal i mean they they were they were yeah pencil whipping you know required inspections and things like that right usually when planes have uh, mechanical issues it's they, they did that, not one that. thing it's a chain reaction of things and any part of that chain reaction being broken could have prevented it Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't, and a lot of times that is due to either cost or human error. My wife works for a Learjet part supply, and there's many times that I get called up because I have to make a quick delivery out to a local airport out in the valley or something. She'll say, they need this part. they got to get this plane off the ground. And I get all ready, and I run over there, and I, I grab this part, and it could be something like this big, and it's got the only thing that's keeping the plane from flying and I get ready to go over there and I get, get throw it in my truck and I drive down 10 miles down the road or not even get that far. And they'll call up and say, never mind. They fixed it. They found something to do. They fixed, you know, they wired something together that the plane's going to go. I'm going, wait a minute. They needed this $3,000 part 10 minutes ago. What did they duct tape together to get this thing going? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes, yeah, Charlene. It doesn't work out so well. Somebody put a Band-Aid on it or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. I value they had to have it. Have it. By the way, Florida. tomorrow, tomorrow, Kevin, big day for us. Oh, oh yeah, we got to get up for, oh, we don't have to get up early either. 2.17 two in the afternoon, which would be 11.17 <clears throat> your time. Perfect. You know, uh, and there's a two-hour window, too, this time. Yeah. Uh, and they say well, there's an 80% chance the weather will be fine. It just better thermo, thermo, uh, conduct those, uh, those parts. Well, it turns cool out, it turns out it was only a sensor. Yeah, but <laughs> the, they, original one. the connection also didn't seal. So that was a problem. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, after hey. the challenger blew up, you know what NASA and a walrus had in common? No, <laughs> they were both looking for a tight seal. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, with that, there's the theme. Uh, and, uh, you know, everybody have a very nice uh, weekend. Uh, Josh is going to be doing the show after ours, but you're going to have to wait a couple of minutes for it to go on because i got to go over here and do a whole bunch of magic to get it going. But then I hope that uh, a lot of you that are here now will call him because it is Labor Day weekend and people have a tendency not to call on Labor Day weekend. As you can Fine. see, we have a quiet night tonight. But anyway, thank you so much, Josh. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Uh, and uh, uh, same thing to you. Uh, 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 oh, man, I'm so out of it now. Uh, and Alan. And thanks to you, Charlene Martinez. And Kevin, thank you. And thank you to Jeff. And I think it'd be thank nice you. if all of you gave a big wave goodbye. And I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, as I said, Josh will be next on Zoom. Okay? So give him a call, will you? Please. You know, I think it's very important that you call him and let him know that you like participating with him. Okay. 
Anyway, we'll see you again on Monday, 4 o'clock, for a Labor Day version of the pop-up show. And then we'll see you again next Wednesday. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.